All right, guys, I thought I'd go over Matthew 25 today. Um, this chapter is about the uh, ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. And with reading this chapter, the only difference I know about these two virgins, one had oil, the other one did not. Other than that, they were the same people. Okay? So the ten virgins are what we see today. Ten people who proclaim, well, well, it's basically a church. All right? Let's just see them as a church. Point blank. But then the church is separated by the foolish who is unrepentant. And then the other half is the wise who are repentant or who repented and turned away from their sin. Okay? So let me start with half of the chapter let me go ahead and read it now the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of ten bridemaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom okay the lamps in the scriptures represent truth represent the word of God represent light okay And the scripture says, but only five of them were wise enough to fill their lamps with oil. Okay? So the lamp represents the truth, the word of God. Okay? And the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Scripture says, but only five of them. Mind you, there's ten of them. Scripture says there's only five that were smart enough. To fill the lamps with oil. Okay? While the other five were foolish and forgot. Okay. So it's ten church people. Represents the whole church. Best of scripture is showing that five of them aren't truly Christ. Five of them do not truly belong to the body of Christ. Why? Because they refuse to repent of their sins. They're still worldly. They still live in the world. Still holding on to sin. It's not that they for, it's not that they forgot to carry oil. They didn't want to. They wasn't ready to repent. They wasn't ready to surrender their lives to Christ. Okay? But it said the five wise, the smart ones, they carried oil. The five wise the five wise repented. They knew what it took. They didn't want to live this life no more. They were done with their sin. They came to the end of themselves. They wanted to be for God, for real. Okay? And it says, So when the bridegroom was delayed, they laid down to rest until midnight. When they were aroused by a shout, The bridegroom is coming. Come out and welcome him. All right? This represents Christ's, Christ's true coming in the last days. All right? Because in the scriptures, the Lord says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will become, the sun will be dark and the moon shall not give us light. All right? So be, be, between what Christ said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, people are going to be living in prosperity and peace. And the world is going to go back to, uh, uh, I would say, almost normal, but not too much. All right? So after the tribulation, that's when you would hear of peace and safety. Okay? That's when the persecution is going to cease. It's going to stop. There should come a great persecution. And after the persecution, Scripture said immediately, but in between that time, there's going to be a delay. In between the time of um, the saints being persecuted, they're going to eventually stop that. The reason... That they're, that they're, that the reason that there's going to be a great persecution is that they're going to try to bring Christianity or the believers to a minority, okay? So we're going to have a great persecution, and then scriptures say immediately after the tribulation of those days, they're going to put an end to the persecution. And then that's when Christ said, "There, the sun's going to be darkened, the moon should not give us light. And the stars will seem to appear to be falling from heaven. This is signaling his coming. But between those two, the world will be living at ease. 
okay, because they have killed or they have brought Christianity down to a minority. So now they can have peace because we are not we are not allowing them to have peace because we want God's uh, commands, God to prevail. We don't want to worship no antichrist, okay, or no false prophet. So because of us, they not they they're not having their peace and their prosperity that they want. So they have to bring us down to a minority. All right. So between the coming of Christ and the um, persecution, the uh, tribulation of those days, there will be peace and prosperity. Christ said the world will be at ease when He comes. Okay, and when He comes, He's going to catch them off guard because they'll bask in false security, prosperity. All right. So that's where I, that's where I'm getting on the um, when He says. On verse uh, 5 to 6, it says, So when the bridegroom was delayed, so he delayed on purpose. He allowed them to have their little fun, thinking they have uh, uh, peace and prosperity. This is the wicked, thinking they have peace and prosperity. He delayed on purpose. And with that delay, he wanted to test us as well. And those with the, uh, five uh, foolish uh, bride, bride maids, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we had the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is basically of God. And with that, they were still worldly. So when they seen this um, peace and prosperity, they begin to adult, They begin to go back into the world, indulge and back into the things of the world. Okay? So Christ delayed that, delayed on purpose to test us. But the five wise, they did not. They didn't care what the world was doing. You have your peace. You have your prosperity. I don't want to have anything to do with that. That's the five wise because they had the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is about self-control. The Holy Spirit helps you to have self-control. Even though your flesh try to, your flesh try to conquer the spirit, but the, with the Holy Spirit it overcomes the flesh. But the five foolish virgin, virgins, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Therefore, their flesh just took over them. They went back into the world. Okay? And he said many will fall back into sin. Christ said it. All right? So when the bridegroom was delayed, they laid down to rest until midnight. When they were aroused by a shot, the bridegroom was coming, come out and welcome him. All right. So with the when they laid down to rest, I forgot that part. Those who read their scriptures, Christ gives us signals. Or Christ gives us um, prophetic events that will signal his return. So we both both brides were looking at his or bo yeah both bri or temp both the both five foolish and five wise were looking at the events of his coming, and I guess when it surpassed them. Or what they thought when he would come, he delayed on purpose. So with him delaying on purpose, it, it basically discouraged them a little bit. That's why it says they laid down to rest. All right. But while they were laying down to rest, the one that had the the oil, the Holy Spirit, she still was faithful to God. She didn't go back to sinning. She probably just was discouraged and saying, well, maybe Christ or maybe the bride, um, the bridegroom will be coming another year or another year or two more, five more years. However long it takes, I'll wait, but I'm a bit discouraged, okay? But the foolish bridesmaid, when she seen that he was delayed, she was like, shoot, let me go back into the world then. Let me drink and marry with them. For my for Christ is not coming in, uh, for a long time. All right, and that's the foolish because they didn't have the Holy Spirit, they didn't have self control, and still they were holding on to their sin. They never repented, so they're still back into the world. And these are people now. These are people today. These are people back then. These will be people more in the future. All right. So after that verse, and then verse seven and eight, it says, "All the girls jumped up and trimmed their lamps." Then the five who hadn't any oil begged the others to share with them, for their lamps were going out. Okay? So when the, uh, it says there was a loud shout, 
And we all know when Christ comes, there's going to be a loud trumpet call. All right? Saying that, uh, basically letting us know that Christ is here. And we'll, we'll know that he's here because he's going to be in the sky. But also a trumpet call. Um, and it says all the girls jumped up and trimmed their um, lamps. So the one, the girls who had the oil, they good to go. You know what I mean? At first they were discouraged, but now they're saying, okay, Christ is here. And they just, they, when it says trimmed off their lamps, they just rejoice. Or trimmed off their lamps, make sure, I guess they made sure everything was right with them. But the thing is, they had the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is like a down payment. Like, like, a, like a seal. Basically, God has, when God sends his Holy Spirit to you, in you, it's basically a sealed out payment that you're mine. All right? So they didn't have to do much when Christ, when, um, when the bridegroom came or when Christ come. When you had the Holy Spirit, you don't have to do much as long as you're not living in sin, as long as you're still for God, as long as you're still for Christ. Okay? But the foolish, the five foolish versions, they don't have the Holy Spirit. There's no down payment. There's no receipt. There's no guarantee that you are Christ, that you belong to God. So this, right when they see him, they're saying, oh, shoot, I need, I need oil because my light is running out. I need oil. But the five wise are saying they don't have any to share with them and telling them to go somewhere else and buy it. Okay. Okay. And going down to verse 10, it says, But while they were going, which is the five foolish, because they went out to buy oil, which you can't buy oil. You get it from Christ when you repent of your sins. But the thing is, for them to repent of their sins is too late. Okay. It's too late. Or they, or they may have been the uh, five churches that are false. All right. Well, they think they can get into heaven by some other means, so they go try to find out some other means to get into the kingdom of heaven. But to get into the kingdom of heaven, you have to repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins. Submit to God and do his will. Okay? Verse 10. But when they were gone, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. The door was locked. Okay. So the bridegroom came, took the five wives, because they were ready. They was for him. All right. They was ready, no matter what time, what day, what time it was. They was ready. But the five wise, five foolish, they began doing other things. They began occupying themselves. These are people, when they see that Christ hadn't come when they expected him to come and he delayed on purpose to, to test them, to try them. They go back to the world. They go back to marrying as far as being happy with the world, conformed to the world, drinking, getting drunk, doing all kinds of, all these things, yet holding on to the name of Christ. And then when God comes, they jump up, oh shoot, let me repent of my sins. Oh, I should have did this. I should have did that. And they on their knees crying out to the Lord. Help, help. I'm sorry, Lord. I repent. Forgive me. But then the, but then the Lord already shut the door. And he locked it. They said while they were gone, so while they were gone partying, living it up, living for the world, the bridegroom came. Christ came. And he said those who were ready, those who had the Holy Spirit, who were for Christ, who was who didn't who did not want to go back to the world, were not conformed to the world, but they were totally transformed, born again, true born again. They are the ones who went with him. And he locked the door. He locked the door. He he didn't have time for the other ones to repent. He said, Before I came, you had all the time to repent. I want those who are for me for me for real. 
Okay, and, and going down to verse 11, it says, Later when the other five returned, they stood outside, calling, Sir, open the door for us. And then verse 12, But he called back, Go away. It is too late. Okay? So after the five foolish seeing that crisis came and Christ took the five wise, who had oil, which is the Holy Spirit. Now that the five foolish have repented of their sins and said, I don't want to go back to that world no more. I'm done with the world. And telling, telling God or asking Christ for another chance. He's saying, open for me. They're saying, open the door for us, please, so we can get into heaven. But then Christ said, go away. This is when Christ said, depart from me. All right? This is the verse when Christ said, many will come to me on that day saying, Lord, Lord, haven't we not prophesied in your name? Haven't we not cast out demons in your name? Haven't we not done many wonderful works in your name? I mean, these could be people that done things for Christ, in Christ's name. But yet, they haven't repented of sin. They held on to worldliness. There's something uh, there's something about them that Christ has rejected them. All right? So when they're saying, open the door for us, sir, Christ said, go away. He said, depart from me. It's too late. So while they were repenting, Christ said, no, it's too late. Ain't no more repenting. There's no more repenting. There's no more sorry. Mercy is done. Grace is over. You had time. Right now, as we speak, Christ gives us mercy. Christ gives us grace. There's grace. That grace is a cushion. That grace is there's nothing that you can do. I forgive you. When God sent his son to die on the cross, it wasn't nothing that we did that he sent him. It was grace. Grace is undeserving forgiveness is why God sent his son. Un it's nothing you did. God said, because I'm gracious, I will send my son to die for you, to give you an opportunity to be, sa to be saved. Salvation will be available to you after he dies. Okay? That's grace. We have grace. Okay? We have mercy. Even though we sin, God said, my son has died for you. You go to him and he forgive you of your sins. But you still got to change. You still got to repent. Okay? And it's the Holy Spirit. When we repent, God sends us the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that helps us, teaches us the ways of God. And when we do uh, fall into sin, it's the Holy Spirit that tells us or nudges us and says wrong. The Holy Spirit grieves. And you know when it grieves because you begin to grieve. It makes you feel bad. It makes you feel bad for the sins that you committed against God. All right, and in the last chapter, is chapter 13, it says, So stay awake and be prepared, for you do not know the date or moment of my return. Okay? We don't know. We don't know. But he gives us signs and events, and we just have to watch for it. Okay? But a person who's truly living for Christ, truly living for God and says, I don't want to live that life no more of sin. And they repent, you know. Christ could come at any time. And there's no, there, there would be no need for them to be scared. Why, you, why would you be scared if you're for him, okay? You shouldn't be scared if you're for him. But if you're living in sin and you haven't repented and left the things of the world alone, yes, you should be trembling. You should be afraid. You shouldn't even be able to sleep good. Because even when you sleep, you can die in your sleep without repentance. You go straight to hell. This is what that means. But if you are for Christ, if you have repented and received his spirit, stay in him. Continue to seek him. For he said, those who stay in me will remain in me. Those who stay in me or those who I stay in, I will remain, or no, those who remain in me, I will stay with them, okay? No, no, no need to be afraid. He said, just stay awake and be prepared.
Be ready at any time. What if what if you're not even alive when Christ comes? You still have to be ready if you die. It's like you have to repent. I could die tomorrow. Am I ready? If does the spirit live in me? Okay? The down payment? Basically saying that I belong to God. The spirit. If you your whole if the whole spirit lives in you, it's a down payment, a seal. Seeing I belong to God. Okay? So there don't need to be afraid. It just reminds me of a woman who was married to a man, but the man is off somewhere far away. Let's say the man's in the military. Okay? And then the woman's home alone. If that woman is faithful to her husband, he can come home any time and he won't have to worry about another man in his house. Or she won't have to worry about him catching her doing anything because she's faithful. She won't bring another man in his house. But what if a woman who is unfaithful and she's with different men messing around on him while he's going away far away? Then yes, she will have to stay awake and be prepared just in case he comes. And when he comes and then there's a man in her, in their house, that's not a good look. She can't expect that man, she can't expect her husband to welcome her with open arms. She may end up being dead. He may end up being dead. Both the mistress and the uh, the wife. That's how it be with Christ. That's how it be with Christ. If he comes and you're faithful, he'll take you underneath his arm. You as his wife, faithful wife. But if you're unfaithful, you go back into the world, he'll come back and he'll kill you. Point blank period. I can't put it no other way. Christ will kill you. He said, if, you, if you're like one of these evil serpent, servants that says, oh, my, my, my master has delayed. And knowing that his master has delayed, he goes back to the world and beats his servants and drinks and marries with the world. Christ said, when he comes, he's going to beat that guy. And not only beat him, he said, he's going to throw him where the unbelievers are. And where the unbelievers are is the lake of fire. So a person who call, who claimed God, claimed himself to be a follower, Christ said if he comes and this person has not changed their lives but has went back into the world, Christ said he will beat him. He will fight him. This is Christ. This is one you say you adore, you love. Christ will fight you. Not only after fighting you, Throw you in a lake of fire, no mercy. Okay? I just wanted to go over that uh particular chapter just to let you know the difference between the ten version and this is the church today. This is the church today. There's those who have committed themselves to Christ, the faithful, the wise, the one who carry who who uh were wise enough to fill the lamps with oil. Not only do you have the word of God, not only do you know scripture so that you won't be lied to by false prophets that come in the, in these last days. But you also have the Holy Spirit who confirms the truth with you. You also have the Holy Spirit who seals and tells you that, yes, you belong to God. You belong to Christ. This is your this is the down payment. Like somebody's buying a house. That house isn't yours until you put that down payment on there. Then you secure and say that's mine. Okay? Same thing with us. The Holy Spirit is that down payment that says, God says, that's mine. That's my possession. That's my belonging. That's my temple. Okay? But that's the only difference between the wise and the uh, foolish is oil. It's oil. They both carry a lamp. They both know scripture. Okay? They both know scripture. The wise and the foolish both know scripture. But the only difference is the oil. They both don't have the Holy Spirit. There's one that has the down payment of the house. There's one that does not. All right. So if you have any questions or concerns, anything, just leave a comment. Until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.